Uh, Tom, one topic that we've talked about for a very, very long time, the uh, minimum wage. Now, you can find that the labor unions want a minimum wage, and they spend millions and millions of dollars lobbying for increase in minimum wage because they reduce some of their competition in the labor market. But there are many people out there who are good people, and they also support the minimum wage. How can you possibly explain the people with polar opposite interests coming up with uh, the same policy? Well, I, I think a great deal of the blame belongs on the economics profession because outside of economics, most people, even most faculty members at leading universities, have no conception of the minimum wage. They simply think, uh, you know, it'll raise the pay of people at the bottom, and that's a good thing. Well, what it really does, as you pointed out, probably more so than a whole lot of other people, is that it prices low-skilled, inexperienced people uh, out, of, out of a job. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was a teenager, I had my first job. Uh, I thought my boss was very harsh. In retrospect, I don't know how the man put up with my incompetence. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't put up with anybody who was that incompetent. Uh, but he, he was paying me some very low rate. If, if he had had to hire me at the rate for an experienced adult worker, there's no way in the world he would have wasted his money like that. The fact is that the programs that are labeled as being for the poor, for the needy, almost always have effects exactly the opposite of those which their well-intentioned sponsors intend them to have. As an example, what are you referring to? Let me give you a very simple example. Take the minimum wage law. It's well-meaning sponsors. There are always, in these cases, two groups of sponsors. There are the well-meaning sponsors, and there are the special interests who are using the well-meaning sponsors as front men. You almost always, when you have bad programs, have an unholy coalition of the do-gooders on the one hand and the special interests on the other. The minimum wage law is as clear a case as you could want. The special interests are, of course, the trade unions, the monopolistic craft trade unions in particular. The do-gooders believe that by passing a law saying that nobody shall get less than $2 an hour or two fifty an hour or whatever the minimum wage is, you are helping poor people who need the money. You are doing nothing of the kind. What you are doing is to assure that people whose skills are not sufficient to justify that kind of a wage will be unemployed. It is no accident that the teenage unemployment rate, the unemployment rate among teenagers in this country, is over twice as high as the overall unemployment rate. It's no accident that that was not always the case. Until the 1950s, when the minimum wage, law, uh, wage rate was raised very drastically, very quickly. I was so lucky. I, I, at the time, I had no, no clue about all this. I left home uh, at, at the, uh, in 1948. Uh, many decades later, I learned that the uh, uh, unemployment rate among black teenagers in 1948, 16, 17 year olds, was 9.4%. Uh, among whites of the same age, it was 10.2%. So both blacks and white teenagers had only a fraction of the unemployment that they have today. Uh, you were expected were, to work. You were expected to be able to get a job. And more, more importantly, the jobs were there for you. Uh, and so, and, what, and this is because of a fluke, really. The, 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 the minimum wage law in the United States, Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938, uh, was passed with specified rates of pay that you're supposed to get. Uh, almost immediately, uh, inflation took off during the 1940s. So by 1948, those numbers that were in the law were meaningless. Oh, I see. In other words, when I started out as a Western Union messenger, the minimum wage was 40 cents an hour. I started out at the bottom at 65 cents an hour. So it was the same as if there was no minimum wage. And uh, this is what happened. You had this, and I was so lucky. I, knew, of course, had no clue about any of this. Now, now a, a black kid 20 years later comes in there. Uh, they've now, they, 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 people have become compassionate. They raised the minimum wage, so he can't get a job. Got it. And I don't think it does any, any community any good to have a whole lot of t teenage uh, males hanging around on the streets with no job and nothing to do. A lot of people say, well, the minimum wage is an anti-poverty device. People are making six, seven, eight bucks an hour. They deserve a minimum wage of $15. Anything below that puts you below the poverty level. Well, that is utter nonsense. It doesn't even pass the smell test. Because 
if it were an anti-poverty device, well then, instead of spending all this money on foreign aid, we just have our experts at the State Department tell Bangladesh, well, you could be rich like we are, just have a higher minimum wage. Thus, the consequences of minimum wage rates have been almost wholly bad to increase unemployment and to increase poverty. Moreover, the effects have been concentrated on the groups that the do-gooders would most like to help. The people who have been hurt most by minimum wage laws are the blacks. I have often said that the most anti-Negro law on the books of this land is the minimum wage rate. And so I think the real answer to your question is that you must not judge a bottle solely by its label. You have to look at what's inside and see what the law or the measure produces.